welcome to today's 3D print. I got a couple of models to show you, and I've got a um, tool upgrade to show you for any 3D printer. I happen to be doing my Creality CR10 spatula. Um, first up is the Drowdy. This is the Hollow Drowdy by ECN 3D. It's thing number 948565. That's the little Drowdy right there. This is printed on my used Wanhao Duplicator i3 that I got, where the only changes I made to it were to um, put an SD card adapter on it and to put a glass plate with a print and Z surface on it. That's it. I changed nothing else about this at all. And the result, why is this thing freaking out? My camera is like literally freaking out. Think about wide angle. That's a little more stable. And here he is. Here's a little droughty. I, I turned him 45 degrees so I can make him bigger so he's about 9 inches long. And I am really, this is very little cleanup. There were a couple little strings I had to pull off. But as you can see, he did the, the hold structural um, pattern incredibly well. And this is a stock one held duplicator i3 using 11.99 a kilogram filament. <laughs> Amazon Prime shipped 11.99 a kilogram filament. It's crazy. And this stuff is nice and strong too. I haven't been able to break it. You know, I, I could if I want to, but no, under normal forces. Um, and this is printed with no support and no infill. And it came out fantastic. I mean, he's cute. Wow. <laughs> Next up, um, Zastro made the Mars Colonial Transport that um, SpaceX wants to send to Mars. And um, I didn't print his, although I'm going to use his to print on the CR-10. But I found this one by Christopher B. first, which is 1885576. The original is 1802506. But um, this one here is broken apart in pieces, and you put it together. And here it is. This is also printed on the One Health Duplicator i3, and it came out spectacular. I've made no modifications, no reinforcements to this, and the Z quality is ridiculous. I mean, it, this is absolutely smooth. Ringing is crazy. I mean, listen to these bearings. Yeah. <laughs> Those bearings need to be replaced. The ringing is nuts, and i got to turn down the jerk and acceleration. But beyond that, the feet print is a separate part, the legs print is a separate part, the engine bell down here prints is a separate part, and then this prints is a separate part. Now, because I did not want to shrink this, I broke it in two, so there's an actual, you can see it in the video here, there's a separation line, right there. And, um, yeah, there it is, right at the top of that panel there. So that's actually two pieces glued together, and this is no supports, no infill, all hollow. There's, there's nothing in here, it's just, I think it's three perimeters. And what I did was, I put this on the print bed, and I, I, um, I told it to only print to 150 millimeters, so it stopped at 150 millimeters. And then I took, duplicated this, and dropped it into the print bed 150 millimeters, so that only this was exposed above the print bed, and that allowed it to print both parts, and you get the whole model. I have a little super glue, put it together, it's good to go. Now I'm going to use Zastro's original model because he did it much better. He prints it this way in two pieces so this is a piece come on so this is a piece and this is a piece so the end the rocket the engine bell and the strut support for the legs here all print as one part which is perfect I understand why the other guy separated it because for smaller print beds but for the CR 10 I'm gonna blow this thing up <laughs> because I want to make a flying version of this one thing I might do is I might increase the size of the landing legs. I might make them bigger and thicker, because number one, that'll make them stronger, and number two, that'll allow them to act as aero shrouds, which will hopefully give me enough of a center of pressure shift to allow this thing with enough nose weight to be stable in flight, to actually be able to fly it like this. And um, although I'll probably break these on landing unless I make them really big, we'll see. But um, I want to, maybe I'll go into Tinkercad and just make these landing legs oversized, just blow them up, make them twice as big. So they'll act as drogue fins to keep the rocket stable as it's flying. Because as this sits, 
I would probably need to move the center of gravity up to here to make this little bugger stable. <laughs> That's That would basically just be full of lead and it would take a big motor to launch it and that wouldn't be good. If I can increase the amount of drag at the back end of this rocket, then I can shift the center. The gravity, the center of gravity will be permitted to be further back. As long as the center of gravity is in front of the center of pressure, the rocket will be stable. Um, yeah, this is cool. I mean, the detail in this is really remarkable. And this is on a stock Weinhaub duplicator I3 with no modifications except for the glass bed. The detail really is shocking. I mean, I see some zitting, but I can't feel them. I can see them, but I, I can see the perturbations, but I cannot feel them. It, it is pretty damn smooth. I am really impressed. The cooling has something to be spoken for. Um, the very tips of these legs that insert into the support struts here, they were starting to warp a little bit from lack of cooling. Um, I'll work on that. I'll get the Cobra on there, and that'll take care of the cooling problem. But yeah, I'm impressed. I, I like this. This is cool. All right, on to my modification for you tonight. Unless you already have it, um, this is this is good if you use a PEI print surface or a Print and Z print surface. More important for PEI because PEI is very delicate. It's very easy to take your very sharp, um, which you should sharpen, your very sharp scraper and dig right into the PEI and you destroy it. Um, it'll still work, but you're going to have imperfections there because you're going to gouge out a chunk of it. So um, what I did was I went and got uh, was it a dollar store and bought a sharpening stone. I mean, you're going to tear up the sharpening stone, but who cares? I don't know where it's at. I'm not going to try to find it. It's just a sharpening stone. It's got two colors with different grit. And the first thing I did was, um, first I sharpened it. Just just rub it at the right angle and sharpen it. Make that edge thinner. It'll help you get underneath the models. And then also, take the corners off. Let's put the drowdy back up. He's pretty. <laughs> um, take the corners off. So you take your sharpening stone like this, and you take this like this, and just and just tear off that corner. And if you notice, my corners are rounded now. Okay? That takes away the point. Then also, I reverse sharpen these. So this is the sharp edge going down. So what I do is I sharpen these corners going up. I put them like this, and I sharpen them until they go up. This way, the corners are both rounded, and they pitch up in the opposite direction of the actual cutting edge of the sharpener. This way, if I accidentally turn sideways or go crooked on the print bed, these will just slide along the print bed instead of that sharp point digging into and tearing apart your print surface. The print and Z surface is surprisingly durable. I beat the living crap out of it, and it's still it's working great. I must have five or six hundred hours on that already, maybe over a thousand hours now, and it's just chugging away. It still sticks as good as the first time I used it, and I've had to hack at it. I'm talking, I've had to <laughs> to get the print off, <laughs> especially that terracotta um, filament, which I really want to try again, because I love that terracotta filament, but um, yeah, this will take care of your um, issues with damaging your print bed. I mean, it doesn't eliminate it, but it makes it a lot easier. So again, sharpen up a little bit, get rid of the points. So scrape those points on the sharpening stone. Do this outside because you're going to take off huge amounts of that sharpening stone doing this. It's going to create dust everywhere. So do yourself a favor. Go outside and do it. This will literally take you three or four minutes tops. I don't think I spent more than uh, 90 seconds doing the corners and another 90 seconds just sharpening up the edge a little bit just because. Why not? I'm there. Sharpen it up a little bit. Make that sharp edge nicer. Um, but again, take off the points. So just scrape the points and round them out so they're round, okay? And then you want to sharpen them in the opposite direction of your scrape um, sharp edge so that if you turn sideways on your print bed, that point doesn't dig into your PEI or Print and Z surface and destroy it. And same thing with Biltac, you'll do the same thing. If you go at it too hard with a nice sharp pointed edge, you'll dig right into that surface and you'll, you'll destroy your print bed. And those things aren't exactly cheap. <laughs> so that's it. Um, oh, something else I did. You'll have to go on Thingiverse and look for this. Um, I don't know where it's at, but um, I printed out a little handsaw blade. Uh, when I make another video trying it out, I'll make sure I have the link um, 
for the Thingiverse files. And if I find it tonight, I'll put it in the description of this video. Um, but yeah, that's it. You, you take a standard um, standard ha hacksaw blade, you put it in here, there's a little slot there, that cavity that fits it. You put it together, you put two nuts and bolts in there. I don't know what size yet, it looks like an M5. I want to say an M5, I don't know exactly what it is, but and then you have yourself a little handsaw. That's pretty cool, I like that. Um, that's it. Again, the Drowdy. I love the Drowdy. This is on the One How Duplicator i3. Fully stock, no modifications except for the print bed. And the SpaceX Interplanetary Transport. I'm going to make this supersized on the um, the CR-10, so I want to make a flight model. Um, I think it would be difficult to make this light enough to be a flight model at this scale. I mean, this is not that heavy. I mean, I've flown models this size that are heavier, but a lot of the mass of this model is going to be nose weight. But it's going to be tough to make this stable, because there's just not a lot um, down here for stability. Although, getting rid of the engine bell will help, but that's going to be made up for by the motor mount for the rocket motor. We'll go from there, but yeah, it prints nicely. Um, don't print the legs. Um, print if you do the the guy who broke it apart for a smaller printer. Um, print the two body parts first. You know, dropping it through the bed like I described, and then um, and you can also print the engine bell, and then print the legs separately. Um, I'm going to include my G code files for the legs and the strut supports because I have a set up as a sequential print where it will print at the I guess the best way to describe it is it'll print one here on the print bed and then it'll go over here Z back down to zero, print this one and then it'll Z back down to zero again and print this one in the back corner um, they're so small that you can do that you could do a sequential print and this way you don't get no stress